Kia ora, folks. Today we're going to talk about differentiation, which is our introduction to calculus. To get started, let's have a quick look at Isaac Newton. Neil deGrasse Tyson. So he's a astronomer. He has a great podcast that I would recommend. He did this TV show called Cosmos uh, for all of you science nerds out there, which is pretty good. So here I'm just looking at Wikipedia. So here's our man, our main man, Newton. Uh, who, as Tyson described, basically invented calculus to solve a problem. We're going to look at that in a second, but check this out. Uh, soon after Newton had attained his BA, the university closed as a precaution against the Great Plague. Although being undistinguished as a student, his private studies at home over the subsequent two years saw the development in theories on calculus, optics, and the law of gravitation. So he's very productive. There's a meme going around right now about what everybody is doing on lockdown. And so this is what Newton got up to. So the problem Newton was looking to solve was pretty straightforward. He was really good at his geometry and he was really good at sketching. And he knew all the properties of something like a parabola or something like a cubic function. But the question was, so here I've got my parabola. The question was, what exactly is this one here? What exactly is this tangent line? And so you could sketch the equ you could sketch the tangent line, but how do you come up with the equation? What is the equation of this line? So we call this line a tangent line, and that's because it touches a curve at only one point. So that's a property of the geometry uh, and has to do with the radius. So a curve has a radius, and the tangent line is going to be 90 degrees to the radius no matter where it is. So if this tangent line intersects at a second point, let's just do a crude approximation. If my tangent line intersects at these two points, obviously that cuts the curve and it's not a tangent line. So Newton wasn't interested in that. He wanted to know exactly how to figure out this tangent line. And so the method of differential calculus allows us to do that and uh, Tyson also mentioned integral calculus. That will be coming up in the second half. One last note, this all happened around 1687 is when Newton published uh, his book, so quite a long time ago, Dark Days in England when that plague went through. Let's back up a little bit and talk about slope. So these terms, slope, gradient, m, and rise over run, they all mean the same thing. If we come up with a formula for calculating the rise over the run, we need two points to do it, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So down here, any two points are required, and we draw a line between them, and then we calculate the slope by going rise divided by the run. Now that line I've drawn uh, between those points isn't necessarily the tangent to a curve, and that's what we'll look at now. So a gradient function is this idea that you can have a function of x that represents the gradient. So I've got an example for us here. I've got some data from COVID-19 infections from the Johns Hopkins data dashboard, and we're going to measure and plot some of the slopes. So let's go through this step by step. So my x-axis like so and my y-axis and I'm going to line them up. So first of all let's pick some points and calculate some slopes. So pick some points 
if I'm going to calculate the slope somewhere around here, let's pick two points reasonably close together. And then I'm going to draw a line through those points. And I can calculate the slope of this line by a rise over a run calculation. So a slope, and let's say that this point is called A and we can calculate the slope of that line. So let's plot that line. So I'm gonna bring A down, and now this is x equals A. The value of this slope goes on the y-axis, so it looks like it's about, well, it's less than one. I'm not gonna estimate what the number is. I'm just gonna say that this now is my slope or my f at a, whatever that output value is. Okay, let's do another slope. So I'll pick another two points and let's pick some points somewhere around here. So there are my points and I'll draw a line between them and calculate a slope. So again, I do the rise over the run and let's call this point B. So that will be my slope at B, and I can plot it. So here I have x equals B, and then the value is bigger than the first one I've calculated, so I'll just estimate it to be approximately here. And this will now be the output function at B. Okay, one more. So that was March. Let's come up closer to early April here. And now the rise over the run, this will be point C. Now the rise over the run is much steeper than before. So when I plot this one, here I have x equals C, and the output should be bigger, right? Because the slope here is more. So here I will have F at C. And I've done three points, but if you do all of the points, so you do all of the slope calculations, then we should be able to get a trend. So, so far I've got three dots, and you can imagine doing all of the other slope calculations and then connecting a function between them. And so it looks like we have some sort of curved increasing trend here. And it also looks a lot like the orange dots or the original data. But keep in mind, the original data on my y-axis was tracking number of infections. And this is my function. So here on the axis, number of infections. Down here, now I'm, I had f at a, well that was the slope value. And I had f at b, that was the slope value, and I had f at c, that was the slope value. So down here, this does no longer match my original graph. So even though the time axis is the same along x, the vertical axis represents now the slopes or the rate of change. So these are different functions, these are different graphs. And so now these values represent a rate of change, and if this was my function, we now call this the gradient function or the derivative function. So we were able to transition here from function to a derivative. Okay, so what does this mean in terms of our data? Let's go back. Well, it means that early here in February, the rate of increase was small but positive, which means that the increase per day, I think these data points are every day, that would be my rate, is per unit time. So the increase per day was a smaller number at point A. By the time we got to point B, the slope was steeper, so the increase was bigger. And by the time we got to mid-April, the slope was the biggest yet, or the steepest yet, and that meant that the rate of increase of infection uh, was increasing. And of course, this is, this is a bad thing people talk about, uh, flattening the curve, and so they're talking about D 
decreasing the value of that slope. So using the calculus or using the methods of calculus or the derivative, we can see how that data is trending. Looking at another example here, so I have a parabola in red and I have a derivative in blue. So we have some notation here, f at x we've seen, but the derivative function here, f prime, looks like so. And so you say f prime at x, or you can say the derivative of f at x. And we could do a similar analysis if I calculate the slope at point two, I can draw a tangent here, or I can do the method of two points close together, and then I wanna plot this value. Now this one is negative, right? This line is going down. And so the value down here is negative one. And then if I come over to this point here, draw a tangent, calculate the slope. This slope now is positive, and so the value right here, come across to the y-axis, this value is positive. Now, both of these methods using a graphical sort of slope calculation and estimation and then plotting is not doing what Newton was after. Of course, Newton could do this himself, but he wanted to know specifically, how do I go from that function and find the tangent, which thinking ahead, that tangent represents a rate. So how do I find that? I'm back in Desmos and let's look at this tangent. So here's my parabola and the red line now is the tangent. You see here, there's only one point that this line is touching and I can zoom in to convince myself that indeed that red line only touches the curve at one point. If you zoom in far enough, it's going to look like both lines are not even, and if you zoom in far enough, one line won't even look curved anymore. So I'll zoom back out. Okay, so as this tangent moves around, we can see how the slope changes. So these slopes now coming in here are negative. We're going to come back around, and the slope of this line is changing, and now these slopes are positive and they're getting steeper or increasing now, they're decreasing. And then we're gonna have this special point right in the middle, right? I missed it just a little bit. If I go back, special point right in the middle, right here, where the slope is zero or flat, and that is a special point. So that is where the function goes from a negative slope, negative, 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 negative. For a moment, we pass through zero, and then we turn positive, 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 positive and continue on. So this behavior is linked to the slope of the function. So here I have a cubic function, and if I start from left to right here, following along the function, the slope of these tangent lines are all gonna be positive, and the function itself is also increasing. So the function is going from minus five to four to three to two as I go up. And then at some point it's gonna switch and the function will start to decrease. So here, two, one, zero, minus one, minus two, and it's decreasing, and then we have another switch here, and the function is increasing. So increasing function, and then I have a special point right here, and then decreasing, and I have another turning point down here, and then increasing again. And at these turning points, we can plot the slope. And that m is exactly zero at these turning points. So for this increasing portion here, the gradient is positive, that just means the slopes. And then for this decreasing part in here, the gradient is negative. And then at these turning points, these special points in between, we have a gradient or a slope of zero. And those are our special points. And we're going to use methods of calculus to exactly find where those points are. Here, I just want to plot these points. I have another cubic function. So 
looking at the graph, I can tell that the slope is zero at these two points, so at zero and at one. So there's my tangent line, and there's my tangent line. Now, if we were to plot these, well, I follow down to my other graph, and there I go, and it's right on zero. If I were to plot this other one, I follow down, and there we go. Those are my zeros. So here the slope is zero, and then by the time I plot it down here, it's crossing the axis at zero. So my blue function, my original function is a cubic, and it's going to be something approximately like f at x equals x cubed. This particular one doesn't go through the origin, uh, so there will be some other pieces to that function, but the dominant term is x cubed. And then my slope or my gradient function down here, it's a parabola, right? And so this one is going to be something approximately f at x equals x squared as my derivative function. And the relationship between these is not coincidental. What happens here is I started with a degree three and my derivative is a degree two. So I went from a cubic down to a parabola. Let's look at how to find this derivative how do we know what it actually is? And to do this, we're going to do something called differentiation from first principles. First principles here just means that you're doing it from scratch. It means that you're not using a prearranged formula to help you out along the way. Um, now the formula that we are going to start with, we have already deduced, so that is included in the first principles. And that is the formula of this blue line here. So the formula of the slope of this blue line here. So if I go back to slope, well, if I have two points, so I have A and B, I have the X value of point A is down here, let's call it X. The X value of point B is going to be called X plus H. And the H just means it's a little distance further away. So we're going to go from x and we're going to go along here and we're going to add some small distance h. I don't know what it is, we'll keep this nice and general. So my point a is x comma and then the y value is over here, f at x. And my point b is x plus h and the y value is f at x plus h. So I have two points. So I'll just write them down. So a is x comma f at x and b the x value is x plus h and then the y value is f at x plus h. All right, two points. Now, how do we calculate a slope using two points? We saw a formula not too long ago that said y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now what I'm going to do is just sub in these points into my slope formula. So y2 is going to be point b, and so that is f at x plus h, and then subtract y1, which is f at x, So y1 is the output for point A, that's here. y2 is the output for point B, which is here. So I'm just subbing in those values. Okay, and then divide by x2, which is x plus h. Subtract x1, which is x. So all I have there is a formula for the slope of that blue line. Now, if I look at the denominator of this fraction, I have x plus h minus x. So actually, these x's cancel each other out. So I'll just put a line through those, and then I can simplify my slope here. 
So this says f at x plus h minus f at x. All divided by h. And now I'm going to make a caveat here. I'm going to introduce something new. I'm going to say, well, what happens if h is really, really tiny? So if this distance between the points is really, really tiny. Then what happens is that point B is getting closer to point A, and then my blue line should approximate more closely my tangent line. So I'm going to say that if H is really small, then this formula now actually tells me the tangent. And if I keep it general, it's the whole tangent function, which we know is the gradient function or the derivative. So we can say that the tangent function is, and then the same thing that I had before, I'm going to call that on the left, I'm going to call it the derivative now. So I'm going to say f prime at x equals this. So we have a picture here. Here's my curve and my two points. And we'll just go through and draw the tangent line approximating those points. That's a horrible approximation. So let's bring h closer. So as I decrease the value of h going to the left here, then point B is going to decrease along the curve and get right up to point A, getting smaller, smaller. And then if A, B are right on top of each other, now I have my tangent line. So the gradient here, the slope, should actually equal the value of that tangent line, which is what Newton was looking for. Now there's one thing I left out two slides ago, which is that as h gets very small, eventually it's going to get to zero. And those two points will be right on top of each other. A will be on top of B. And if that happens, and we look at the denominator of that equation, we had divided by h. So I'll just write it down again. So this was the numerator and then the denominator was over h. So as h gets very small, if it gets to zero, right? If this gets to zero, then I have a divide by zero problem. And divide by dividing by zero doesn't work. That's a math error. We're not allowed to do this. And so we're going to avoid that and we're going to say, well, h can get really small, but it can never actually get to zero. We'll say it can never reach zero, and we're going to call this a limit. So limit is a calculus term, and it just means that my two points here decreasing h, decreasing h, decreasing h. Eventually, it's going to be right on top of a, but not quite there yet. And that is called a limit. So I need to express that in my formula. And so I'm going to say that the derivative, f prime at x, this function, it still equals this calculation, but now it's the limit as this value h approaches zero. So that's h arrow zero. So this is called limit notation and this defines how we can find any derivative as long as we know the um, f at x, the original function. All we have to do then is make these substitutions 
and calculate that slope function. Again, it's not a single slope, it's all the slopes together. I've set this up using Desmos, so we can see my parabola here, and I've got two points. So I've got a red point, and in this case it's black, and there's some distance apart. And as the red one comes closer to the black one, the line between them more closely approximates the tangent line. And we can run it through and see how the approximation gets better and better. Uh, and this was put together using limit notation so we can look at how this works here. I've got the slope calculation. I'll just pause it. I've got the slope calculation here, and we can see the function a plus h minus f at a. In this case, we're using the slider value a instead of x, and then divided by h. And we can see here the slope is 1.96. Now, what's the actual tangent slope? Well, I have to bring the points close together, and then eventually, when they're right on top of each other, because I'm just using this algebraically without calculus, I'm in at this point dividing by zero and we see here the slope is undefined and there's no tangent line drawn so my approximation here if I'm just slightly off it's about 1.15 I can zoom in and take a look at what's going on with these points and we can see that indeed they're separated so it still is an approximation of the tangent until they're right on top of each other eventually we, my PC is going to run out of memory and I won't be able to do this, but you can sort of zoom in and drag it even closer and get a better approximation of that tangent line. Example, find the derivative from first principles. So I've got my formula up here for reference to help me out, and I've got my function f at x equals x squared. So that's my parabola that we've been looking at a lot. So my derivative, f prime at x, and what I want to do is I want to apply this formula. So wherever I see x, I'm going to sub in first, evaluating at x plus h. And this is just that tiny distance plus h away. And then I'm going to subtract evaluation at f at x. So just as it says here, f at x plus h. So in my function where I see x, it now gets replaced by x plus h. So let's draw some brackets and put the squared. And then in the brackets here, I have x plus h. All of that is squared. And that's my first term. My second term my second term is just subtract f at x. And I already know what that is. It's just x squared. That's my function as is. So subtract x squared and divide by h. Now at this stage I've actually left out an important part of this derivative calculation and that is that this whole thing is a limit. So I'm going to write lim short for limit and then h arrow 0. And I'm going to put that in at every step along the way until I actually evaluate the limit. Okay, what can I do next? Well, I still have h on the bottom. So if I sub in 0, which would be right at that point of evaluating the limit, then I get this math error. So I can't proceed that way, but I can expand this bracket and simplify the algebra. So my next line is still the limit as h approaches 0. And my algebra is now x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, and then subtract x squared all over h. Okay, do you see the like terms? We have x squared and we have minus x squared. So those will cancel. So let's simplify again limit as h approaches 0. And now I have 2xh plus h squared all over h.
So next stages are we're looking to remove the zero from the denominator. And we can do this by factoring. So again with the limit, and now let's factor out an h on top. So h times 2x and then plus h and then in the denominator I still have h. So I've just changed the form a bit by factoring and the h on top can cancel with the h on the bottom and that's good news for a limit calculation because that means that now we can apply the limit by subbing in h equals zero. So my derivative f prime at x equals, and now I don't need to write the limit notation again. So this is 2x plus, and then we sub in h equals zero, and that equals 2x. And so that should be my derivative function. Remember it is a collection of all of the values of the slope. Let's just use Desmos to double check this. Here's my parabola. Here is my derivative function that I found using first principles. Now let's use Desmos to plot the derivative. So to do this, I need function notation. So f at x, and then I can type f apostrophe x for my derivative. And we can see here that the blue and the green, if I do this one on and off, the blue and the green are right on top of each other. And so the derivative by Desmos is the same as the derivative we found using first principles.